Welcome to the development of the final solution lecture. This lecture is going to talk mostly about uh, the gas vans and the transportation to extermination camps. You can see in this picture on the left, these are people getting aboard the cattle trains to be transported to the death camps. And then arrival on the death camp, you can see all these dead bodies of people who passed away uh, on their way there. Phase one of the final solution, this was shootings, all right? Jews were going to be rounded up, told they were to be relocated. Um, they were taken to woods off in the area, and then they were going to be shot one by one with their uh, bodies falling into mass graves like this man here. Once he's shot, he's going to fall in. Or they were the they would be told to stand in the hole, and then they would be shot. Um, because this has an effect on the psychological mind state of the people doing the shooting and because bullets were needed for the war um, they get rid of the shootings pretty fast and what they decide to do is convert vans into gas vans so they're rounded up again until they're going to be relocated and that they're going to pile them in the back of these vans and then take them to a no new location but the Jews didn't know that they actually would take the exhaust and funnel it into the back of the van. So you can see the front of the van here and this is the back. They would cram 90 people into these vans. All right. And feed the exhaust in there and people would die from suffocation due to carbon monoxide poisoning. All right. Total throughout the entire Holocaust, 700,000 Jews will be killed in the vans. That's that's a huge number. That's almost a million people. So where did this start? Well, late summer of 1941, Himmler's going to notes that the psychological burden that it has on their man of just con shooting innocent people over and over, and he says it's it's just not going fast enough, and we need a more convenient way of killing. All right, it's not exactly uh, under quiet talks either. A lot of people can hear gunshots going on, and if the war front isn't on that area. You kind of get suspicious when large amounts of people start to disappear. So the result was they're going to take vans, mount them to a chassis, and that way they can drive them around. All right? And then they just have the carbon monoxide in the back. The more they drove, the more carbon monoxide pumped in, and it could kill these people. All right? They want to start to conceal these killings. Okay. And so the van was a very easy way of concealing. Nobody had an idea of what was going on. Jews would just be thrown in the back. They'd be driven around until they were dead. However, it's not exactly very effective. You couldn't kill that many at a time. It's only 90 at a time, okay, in one van. So if you had multiple vans, yeah, 400 people seems kind of like a large number. But when you're trying to eradicate 11 million people, 400 people at a time just isn't fast enough, and it took 10 minutes to kill them, all right? And 10 minutes to the Nazis was just way too long of a method to kill these people. We're going to take a look at the first uh, extermination camp or death camp, that is Kelno, all right, deep in the center of Poland. Now, this will be the first extermination camp to be set up, all right? And the, all the deaths here were carried out by these gas fans, all right? Um, a quarter of a million people were killed between December of 1941 and March of 1943, and then between June to July of 1944. Um, Kelno was different from other extermination camps, or what you guys know about uh, these extermination camps. There was no train loads of people coming in, mass amount of people, all right? Um, trains would bring these people in, but not in a mass amount, of, all right? They would be brought to this large country home called the manor, right? They told they'd be disinfected before being sent to the work camps. So they'd have them undress, walk down this long corridor, and then they'd be packed into the back of the van, right? They had no idea it was a van. It was just constructed to look like this big old room, right? And then they would shut the doors. And once they shut the doors, you knew something was going wrong and it wasn't exactly what they told you, right? They had three gas fans that were specifically constructed sealed compartments right they would line them with tin so that they'd be airtight the double doors that shut in the back were air t airtight not to let any of the gas out um, doors were sealed and then the engine would run in neutral 
all right? <clears throat> and then they would start to drive away. Um, the floor had a wooden lattice. What lattice is, is it strips of wood, and then they would overlay them, kind of like this, all right? So there was a, a, a square hole there, and that was to allow bodily fluids to drain through, because when you're choking on gas, you're going to start to vomit. So there's going to be a lot of vomit on the floor. And that way, if it fell through the lattice, we just need to pull out a tray and dump all of the bodily fluids. Also, when you die, you lose control of your body f bodily fluids. So the people being naked, there would be a lot of urine and feces on the, on the ground, too. Needed an easy way to clean it up so nobody knew the next people coming in wouldn't suspect what was going on. All right? Um, so just once again, they would cram them in the back, start the drive, carbon monoxide pumped through the van's exhaust into the van, and after about 10 minutes, the victims were dead. All right, then the driver, after the 10 minutes, the driver would drive the van um, two and a half miles into the woods, all right, into a forest area where they'd have mass graves to dump the bodies. All right, <clears throat> um, once they were there, they would actually have Jewish workers take the bodies out of the van, all right, and they'd put them into a mass grave and dump quicklime on them. That would help decompose the body. Later in the existence of the camp, though, they're going to create two crematory crematories were, um, were going to be placed there, and the cremation process was going to begin in the spring of 1942. However, this is debated because at the beginning, they had the mass bodies where they would dump the quicklime on them to decompose the body. But we know that as the Soviets uh, closed in on the camp, they would actually dig up these mass graves and burn the bodies. So this is kind of debated, like... Well, why wouldn't they have just burned them from the beginning? All right. Um, they're going to be burning people at a pretty fast rate. It, it was semi-fast. It's still in a massive amount of killing done, uh, just not as fast as they would have liked. And then from 1943 and on until the end of the camp, they actually dumped the ashes and the bones of the victims into the river, and the vi river becomes so polluted that people can actually see whole bones rolling down the river as it flowed. <laughs> Alright, so this is just kind of what the castle of Kelno looked like when they would arrive. They would undress, walk down this long corridor, and then into the back of the van. This here is a picture of men uh, waiting to be disinfected, all right, in which they would be killed in the back of the vans. All right, this driver just kind of described what happened. When they would get there, the workers would open up the door. When they got to the forest, the workers would open up the doors of these vans. And because people were in such a panic and pushing on the doors to try and open the doors, um, that you'd have all these bodies smashed against. And upon opening the doors, you'd have nine to ten bodies just completely fall out onto the ground. All right, and this is a whole picture of the van. Imagine 90 bodies just force-fed into this van, just absolutely crammed. Okay. Um, a few issues with the vans, though, in this method of killing. Um, Jews sometimes, in a panic state, would be able to break open the sides of the van. All right. Sometimes not everybody's going to be dead. All right. This camp was considered to be the least productive, um, but yet still they killed 152,000 people. All right. They just needed more, larger, more permanent facilities um, for the true final solution. All right. Get this from a Nazi newspaper. It says, Now judgment has begun and it will reach its conclusion only when the knowledge of the Jews has been erased from the earth. They want no trace of Judaism or Jews uh, to be left on earth. All right? And so they're going to come up with another final solution. We've learned about two phases of the final solution, shooting and gas fans. Now they want to come up with a better idea on how to take care of them. In January of 1942, Himmler decides there needs to be a change in tactics and then calls for a special conference at Wannsee uh, in Berlin. At the conference, they decided that the existing method just wasn't efficient enough and they needed a new final solution, a new way to kill more Jews at a faster rate. And so they're going to meet at Wannsee at Berlin. And they were trying to plan out the quickest way to eliminate 
the remaining 11 million Jews. Think about that. You're sitting at a table trying to come up with the fastest way to kill 11 million people. All right. Um, what they decided that concentration camps would now become extermination camps. And they had six major camps, Auschwitz being one of them. Your six camps would be Kelno, which we learned about, Treblinka, Sobibor, Majdanek, Belzec, and Auschwitz. So this is just a picture of Juan C. where they met. All right. I'll go over this with you in class. All right. Uh, SS tactics, he dehumanization, remember that's one of the stages of genocide, all right? <clears throat> the SS guards who did the murdering of the Jews, they were so brainwashed with anti-Semitic propaganda that this didn't seem odd to them to uh, be able to do this time and time again, all right? So the Jews were going to be transported in cattle cars, terrible conditions as I talked about in the last lecture, all right? Um, the SS being able to see these naked, dirty, and half-starved people with their bones sticking out. They just look like starving animals, and that's what they were told. These were animals. So this helped reinforce the Nazi propaganda that these were not human beings that they were killing. All right, And the SS used to train new guards by encouraging them to set fire to a pit of live people. Think about that. And they were usually children. Children set on fire and burnt alive. And this, if they were able to complete this and not have any uh, psychological burden put on them, they could continue to do this, then they would be excellent SS guards. All right. What happened once they got to these camps? Okay. Um, at Auschwitz, the trains pulled into a mock mock up of a normal station. Like, oh, hey, it's a normal train station, normal place, all right, the Jews were helped out of the cattle trucks by Jews who were specifically chosen by the Nazis, so they looked a little healthier, they would convince the people to come out of the train that everything was okay, um, they would also have a, a Jewish orchestra playing music, so if you had orchestra music playing, it's this calming feeling like, oh hey, everything's going to be all right. But when they would arrive, they'd go through a process known as selection, all right? Mothers, children, the old and sick, they were sent, they were put in one line while the able-bodied people were put in another line. The mothers, children, the old and the sick, they were sh sent straight to what they called the showers boat. They were really gas chambers. So the second they showed up, they were already put in line to die. The able-bodied people were sent to work in the camps, all right? And they'd be killed through a process known as destruction through work. Pretty much, you're going to be worked to death. All right, and this is just a picture of the Jewish Auschwitz, the Jewish orchestra at Auschwitz playing to the new arrivals. All right, here's a testimony by a few people. I'll cover them in class. That talks about their transportation on the trains. Okay. This is the liquidation of the ghettos, so to get them there, they had to clear them out of the ghettos. They would come in firing bullets, scaring people so that they really didn't take anything with them. They'd rip suitcases out of their hands, so it was just the bodies or whatever was attached to them would be going. And you can see just huge amounts of people moved all at once. All right, and you can see how many people they crammed into open cattle cars. All right, these are people being forced into the cattle cars. And that's the end of the lecture. Thank you.